Hi and welcome to um, this video from KPOIT Solutions. My name is uh, Keith and today I'll be talking to you about uh, Mountain Lion and <clears throat> how I'm getting on with it. I've been using it for about a week now. This is the first time for me. Uh, I've migrated from a Windows um, uh, from Windows 7 Ultimate and I wanted to um, alleviate some worries maybe for Windows users, specifically Windows users really, on the ease of use of the Mac and um, how similar, it's not similar but there are similarities in, in um, between the two and I'll show you um, the similarities in a minute um, but they're just called different things and I really wanted to alleviate some worries that maybe the Windows users have of migrating to a Mac uh, that it might be hard to use. It's not, it's very easy to use and uh, I'm going to show you now so let's let's get started. Uh, first of all, um, we're going to click on the little Apple icon. This is just like clicking the start button. Um, really, it's, it sh shows you about the Mac, the software updates, App Store, system preferences. Um, you can do your dock as well. Along the bottom here, you can uh, turn hide on, hide on, turn make notification off, that kind of thing. You set your dock preferences as well, system preferences, which is like your control panel. Um, force quit, so if there's an application that's not running properly, it won't close, then you can force quit, sleep, restart, shut down, log out KPL, uh, log out of your uh, login ID. Pretty simple stuff really. Um, the finder, which is basically like clicking my computer, and that will bring up all your folders and files um, that you have, and to set um, preferences for that, you just click on finder, preferences and there you have and you'll find um, in um, pretty much all the way through this operating system is that um, every single um, application I've opened so far has a has a menu uh, along the top here I'll just show you maybe Google Chrome here you'll see Chrome and then you've got all your different um, uh, menus and sub menus here uh, and you'll find that that that's pretty much the same all throughout um, all throughout the OS, every time you open something up, um, you'll have a, a menu for it there, which is quite a good little feature. And um, you don't have that in um, in uh, Microsoft really. Um, which is you have it actually on the the applications software, so it sort of takes up a bit of uh, screen really. So it's nice that it's along the menu bar along the top there which is a, a nice little feature so going back to the preferences for your folders uh, for your my computer or the finder icon um, you click on finder you select preferences and it'll bring up this little window here uh, click on general and that basically show uh, basically so you can show icons on your desktop so if you want to show your hard disk your external disk your CDs DVDs and iPods connected servers and they'll all show up there I uncheck those because I don't really want um, I don't want my desktop cluttered with stuff. Uh, your sidebar, um, this will show um, <clears throat> basically down the left hand side here. So you can put what you like on there. Um, by, by default, all of these will come selected. So that all of these will be here. And to be honest, it's quite annoying. So, um, and too much clutter. So I, I pretty much have all of these deselected because I don't want them in my. Um, in my sidebar here I just have my main essentials there and then obviously advanced you can show your file extensions that kind of thing um, <clears throat> so it's quite a nice little feature there and um, if you want to get to your applications uh, which is along here you can click on finder click on applications and there's all your applications there and then simply just to put one in there uh, we'll go with uh, reminders for now so you just literally click on it drag it and drop it on there and you'll find that quite a lot during the uh, the whole of your operating system really is very simple drag and drop sort of thing uh, you can move things around really simple it's, it's quite a nice thing and if you want to remove it from the mat or, uh, from the dock sorry or if you accidentally remove it from the dock and um, you accidentally remove it you know same thing with um, rocket dock or Cairo dock if you use those pretty similar thing and um, if you want to replace it back you literally find the application that you wanted there in the first place that you you accidentally remove, you click and you drag and you drop it onto the bar and there it is. So yeah that is a great little feature and um, <clears throat> you'll find that a lot predominant 
throughout the operating system, uh, drag and drop, that kind of thing. It's very simple and uh, easy to use. Um, next, we'll move on to system preferences. You can oops, you can uh, get to that via the. Let me just close this so I accidentally click that. Get started with Wi-Fi. Uh, click on yeah, Apple, and you can system preferences or down here just click on the icon <coughs> and it brings up your system preferences it's a bit like um, Ubuntu if you've used it uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it the Linux uh, distribution uh, pretty similar to that kind of thing in fact the, the whole sort of thing really is pretty similar to Ubuntu and that's why I found it quite easy to maneuver around and use and find find things that I needed to find um, so let's head to desktop uh, first and you can set your desktop picture and screensaver. Uh, you click on your screensaver to get to your hot corners uh, and you can set hot corners so when you go into a crew that brings up your launch pad and you can see all your uh, different applications that are there. Uh, head up to the right and it opens up my notification uh, area. Uh, I set that myself because I kept missing this little icon here, the little notification that brings up your notification. So I, set a hot corner there and in the bottom there just click on that and it brings up all your applications and then to the left it clears your desktop so you can see your desktop view and then you just click go back to it again to to, to bring back your uh, current screen uh, which is a nice little feature actually um, next we can go to security and privacy um, it's called gatekeeper in uh, in Mac and um, I'll just get into it here and um, basically <coughs> you can set all your um, security and privacy settings uh, your firewall so you can turn on encryption your firewall and your privacy as well uh, under general you'll see here allow applications downloaded from and then you have three options Mac App Store so that's I would call high security you can only download things from the Mac App Store uh, second option is Mac App Store and Identified Developers, uh, which basically means that, that these identified developers have been vetted or identified by uh, Apple as uh, good developers. Uh, or you can just click anywhere, which is what I prefer because I, I like to click from, uh, I like to download from other sources other than the Mac App Store. Uh, and if they're not identified, then I won't be able to download it. But uh, if you select anywhere, uh, you can uh, pretty much do that. Uh, let's head back into here again uh, to set up your mail, contacts and calendars uh, if you click on it you'll be greeted with a nice little uh, menu here and if you want to add a new uh, <coughs> excuse me if you want to add a new um, email account or anything like that you, you simply uh, select here say gmail email address password click set up and it does it automatically for you um, same with twitter uh, Twitter integration as well um, your username your password sets it up automatically if you're like me however and you have um, domain specific emails and it doesn't recognize them uh, you can click on add another account add mail account create and then it'll bring up the same as if you were setting up mail uh, Gmail or Yahoo uh, and you click the email address your password if it finds it and it finds the settings for you it will, it will do it automatically uh, but like me however it didn't and I had to go through my web hosting company uh, to get the information that I needed. Uh, it was pretty simple once I got it all, it, uh, it took me about half an hour, um, so it wasn't too bad. Um, here you can set your user um, account details. Um, again, you have to click on the click on the lock to open it up. Uh, here you can change your password. Uh, your login items. This is quite good. You can stop certain things from opening um, on that when you open uh, Windows. A bit like my, uh, Windows um, Windows Start function, uh, you can stop things from from opening automatically, or you can add things uh, that uh, open up automatically uh, when you open your uh, when sorry when you first boot the operating system. Uh, and you can set that for documents as well, so you can have documents that open. Um, automatically which is a really good feature I, I like that feature um, it, it's quite a nice uh, feature here as well um, what else can I show you parental controls uh, if you've a parent and you want to restrict your kids from doing certain things you can restrict them through your parental controls uh, panel here 
um, dictations. Um, there's a f new feature in uh, for notes when you're taking notes. Um, I did an example there earlier. Uh, you literally double click your function key and then you can say what you want to say. So I'll just quickly do something here. My name is Keith and I'm from KPL IT Solutions. And you have to speak clearly, obviously. I said I'm from and it, it said open, but you have to speak clearly and precise and it will um, dictate what you've said, which is quite a nice little uh, feature here. Another thing I want to remind, uh, just in case you're coming from Windows, is when you download something, it doesn't automatically, um, what's the word, it doesn't automatically set itself up, like in Windows when you when you download something, it extracts itself, it installs itself automatically, you, you go through the steps to install it. And from here I've noticed um, when I'm downloading from the internet, um, for example, I'll head into my downloads folder, see if I've got anything here. Um, here we go, the splash, uh, flash, you'll get something like this file here, and then you have to uh, double click on it, and it'll open this little window up here, and you have to physically drop the application into your applications folder and it will show up um, obviously I've already got Skype installed so I'm going to stop that so that's um, does get I wouldn't say annoying but um, you have to make sure you do that otherwise you won't be able to use the, the I found that the application doesn't work um, so that, that's another feature you might want to look out for I suppose it's it might get annoying for some um, if not for others uh, one thing I will recommend you install um, as soon as you can really is uh, if you want to use YouTube or anything like that you're going to need to install the Flash uh, Flash Player and it's just a matter of, of going over to um, Flash Player and, uh, and and downloading it really Adobe and you install the Flash Player and it will do exactly the same thing as uh, what I just did with Skype you have to go through the same thing I've already got it installed so I don't need to do that and um, I hope this has been informative for you. This is just my opinion on, on Mac. I really like it. I've enjoyed it so far. Um, I've obviously still got loads to learn uh, about the operating system, but um, uh, I've enjoyed it so far. Um, for me, luckily, I use Ubuntu, and it's, it's quite similar to Ubuntu, really. So I haven't really found anything that's been a bit like, uh, oh, um, oh, actually, well, just one more thing as well I forgot to mention. When you open uh, an application, uh, say Google Chrome, and you click on the X, uh, the little cross here to close it you don't actually close it it just closes it down into the menu bar here into the dock you physically have to um, uh, close it from from the menu bar at the top here so you would click on Chrome and then quit Chrome to, to quit it uh, I'll give you another example here like this um, you close it it's maybe not that one uh, uh, let's try it on Safari there it is and you can see it's open and you click to close and it's still there you'd have to click on here and quit Safari and um, that's it uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video please comment like and subscribe and uh, if you've got any comments uh, please let me know um, it's how we all learn I suppose um, and if there's anything you want me to do for the next time uh, then I'll do it uh, obviously if you've got any ideas on any software you want me to do Windows or Mac then uh, we can go through that with you um, until next time um, Happy computing and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.